My name is Monica Gleiberman, and you're listening to Silence On Set Podcast. On today's podcast, we have Melissa Roxburgh, who plays Michaela Stone on the beloved series Manifest. Season four picks up two years after Grace Stone's death, and the Stone family is still in disarray. Ben is still grieving the death of his wife and has pushed everyone close to him away to focus on the search of his missing daughter, Eden. So to talk about what fans can expect for season four, part one, here is Melissa Roxburgh. It was the biggest announcement when Netflix decided to bring it back. I was so happy. What was it like transferring kind of over, hearing that you guys are going to continue? And then heading over to Netflix and filming your final season. You know, it's funny because it's not like we don't work the same way as other companies. Like we're not go physically going somewhere else. Like everything for us kind of remained the same. We shot at the same stages. We had the same creatives. We had the same cast, obviously. Um, so everything was pretty much the same other than the fact that it just felt a little bit more relaxed. And obviously there was a, you know, a joy on set for just being back for the final 20 it didn't feel too different, to be honest. We're just excited to get to do it again. Where is Michaela going into the season? Where is her headspace? And how is she dealing with Ben, who's in a very negative headspace for quite a bit of the season? For a couple, for all of the seasons, they've taken turns with like good cop, bad cop. And so when one of them is like, not on board with the callings the other one is and when someone is being negative the other one's being positive positive. and in fact josh and i had this thing on set where one of us was positive polly and the other one was negative nelly so if i was having a bad day i was negative nelly and i'd be like i need my positive polly today but we did kind of do that in the show as, as characters too so this is ben's turn to be negative nelly he obviously has lost his wife and that you know, he's warranted to be in a bad mood about that. Um, but it kind of leaves Michaela on her own and she's left to solve these callings without him. And it's, it's a lot, it's a lot for her to handle. Um, she can do it, but she doesn't want to do it without him. Um, on top of the fact that the last thing that she heard from Jared was that he didn't think Zeke was going to live. And so he's kind of told her that there's still feelings there. And now conversations need to be had between Michaela and Zeke, between Zeke and Jared, between Jared and Michaela. Um, as love triangles do get to see a little bit of that, but mostly Michaela is just frustrated. Like we go into season four with the government a little bit more involved and they're kind of being watched a lot more and they're being, you know, we saw them slightly getting tested on in other seasons and then that kind of progresses into this one. So, um, Michaela's fed up. She's fed up with a lot of things. What's so realistic is in the terms of like an immigrant, right? There's registries and check-ins and all of that kind of stuff. That's how these people are being treated. It, yeah. it does make it a very relatable show in that aspect too, because you're watching it and they have to check in on this registry and go to this list and have these meetings. And I think it's a very realistic version of what this world would be like or could possibly be like in terms of if some weird supernatural thing, you know, happened to them. Yeah, and it's also just like as as season four progresses, just like the world starts to turn on them even more than they already have. And it's just like, it's so crazy to think that what you're saying resembling of the real world, like no one stops to ask them if they're okay <laughs> or if like how they are as humans. Um, so yeah, to your point. I also enjoyed the fact that while Ben, you know, and I'll make fun of Josh, you know, later. <laughs> well, he looks like kind of like the Unabomber. I enjoyed <laughs> scene because um I think a lot of people went oh it's so easy like Josh makes it look so like effortless like you know Ben's just so on top of things and when it's thrown to Michaela it's more like what would happen if it was like thrown to me like I'd be like ah like I don't know what to do so you know what I mean like so I felt like it was so relatable your character this season for part one because she's just like I don't know like I don't know what to do anybody that's willing to help me Yes. Like I will take your yeah. help. I will do whatever I need to do. So I, I enjoyed that aspect of it. Was it hard filming a lot of scenes without Ben because a uh, or without Josh, because you were kind oh, of, so of course, I mean like any scene on every, any chance I get to film a scene with Josh is amazing. You know, we work really well together and we're just good friends, but I think it also gave us a chance to play with other people. And I think in this season, there is a chance for a lot of different characters that you wouldn't think would interact now get to interact with the dynamics are all kind of getting switched around and you see you know 
Zombie and Vance have some more scenes together, and Cal gets to have scenes with like people you never would have thought too. And so it's, I kind of like it. Yeah, I love like I love kind of how they maneuvered everything. What I was yeah. worried about as a viewer were, you know, obviously JJ who plays Jared. I was worried that there might be something because I love and I ship Michaela and Zeke like hardcore. I love Matt Long. I ship you guys. Do you feel that they're end game? That by the time the show is over. They are meant to be, and they're the ones. Could go either way. On one hand, you have Zeke, who's this, you know, you've got the supernatural aspect, and she's fallen in love with him because they understand everything of what they've gone through together. Mm -hmm. Um, But on the other hand, you know, Michaela and Jared have a history, and there's just so much loyalty there. Like, they are family, and Zeke's kind of newer to that picture. And so it could go either way. <laughs> um, just rapid fire questions that I got from fans. How was it for you in terms of the callings? Because there was a time period where you weren't hearing them. So as an actor, what is that like for you? Because it's hard to pretend to hear something that you're not hearing, but then now you're pretending that you're not hearing. Like, you know, it's like a weird thing. So what was that like for you? They are um, a lot less physical than they were in season one. Season one, we had the most physical callings and we were so tired as actors from like moving our bodies because on screen you know you'll never tell but we had to move our bodies scene after scene after scene and so (laughs) we got a lot of headaches so I'm just kind of grateful at this point that we're not getting as many and also with the season you know we learn a lot more about the callings I think fans will get a lot of answers that they're looking for what are you hoping fans get out of watching this part one because it's intense and so much happens it just like it's keep going because it really just gets higher and higher and, and more and more complex from there. And I just hope that they enjoy it. I hope they keep, they hit next when Netflix asks if they're still watching. I hope they just keep hitting next. Another question that I got asked a lot were the two more things were one, did you steal anything from set? I stole stuff all the time. I would steal socks. I would steal, um, I forgot my jewelry a couple of times, which they weren't super happy about, which is really nice earrings. Um, I think I still have her necklace from season one and past that nothing specific. And I thought about it. Like there was, there was a few things that I was like, Ooh, I might want to take that. They were all things that like in a couple of years, I probably wouldn't have meaning about like the real, you know, thing that I took from set was just the relationships that we got to build. And I know that sounds cheesy, but it's true. Like I really have family for life now. That kind of falls into another fan question, which was a lot of them wanted to know, you know, were you happy with reading the finale of the show, which would be for part two? So I want to ask you that if you were happy, but I also want to ask you what it was like, because I'm seeing super emotional posts from everyone on this cast. So in terms of also leaving and not continuing filming, what was that like to have to say goodbye? Like it's, you guys, all the posts were making me so sad and emotional, like just seeing you guys have to say goodbye. Yeah, we were a little soggy eyed for a bit, not gonna lie. You know, it's it's five years of the same thing with the same people over and over again. So you really get to see like all facets of these humans. Um, and that's gonna be really hard to not, you know, see every single day. Like Josh, his dressing room was right next door to mine. So he'd knock on my door every morning and I'm going to miss that. And just like certain people that you, you connected with more so not being able to like see their face constantly. Um, But I think that with where the show ends and where it got left, like I wouldn't want to touch it anymore. And so it's, you know, double-edged sword or whatever phrase I'm trying to find here. I don't want to touch it. I'm going to miss them so, so much, but I absolutely will see them again. So it's super bittersweet. And you're happy with where it ends? Yes, I am happy. I think that it's such a hard show to tie up in one episode or two episodes or however many episodes. So I think the fact that they manage, and I think in a beautiful way they managed to do so, is pretty incredible. Um, and I think fans will be really happy. Is there any particular scene that you're excited for that you could tease that fans should look out for for this part one? For part one, I mean, I like the like relationship stuff whether it be with Ben, Jared, Zeke, whoever. The fact that season three ends with Zeke telling Michaela, we need to talk. You get to see that conversation. And then you get to see the conversation with Jared. And those are both really hard conversations for for both people. So yeah, I think those scenes. I want to also ask you, 
in terms of the death date, that's been like a major thing that does fall into part one. Will we, and I know you can't answer this, but maybe you could like hint around it. Will we get past the death date or will we be able to move forward? Let me say this. Don't know how to answer that. It's a complex answer. It's a yes and it's a no. Yeah, that's the best way I can describe it. It's a yes and a no. We we do and we don't. But it's addressed. So one way or the other, oh, there's one thousand percent. One thousand percent. We we get we get to the death date, and yes and no. Hope you guys enjoyed listening to Melissa Roxburgh talk about what fans can expect for this upcoming season. Manifest season four part one arrives on Netflix on Friday, November fourth. So make sure you head over to Netflix to check out all of the episodes. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you're updated on all of our latest podcasts. And head over to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe, so you're updated on all of our video content.